Juggernaut Unstoppable. Uh, two of the three Juggernaut teams from the Western Cape. Tiger Valley Synergy, Unbox Mem Africa, obviously your current leaders. Cape Crossfit Wolfpack, the 10 Star Hybrids, Crossfit Zulu in lane eight, in lane nine, Cape Crossfit Werewolves, and in lane number 10, the Pack Life Wanderers. This one is gonna be awesome. That's it, that's actually all I have to say. It's gonna be awesome because you know what? It's gonna be fast, it's gonna be nasty, but at the same time, 15 minutes is gonna be gritty because you're gonna have rest period. Obviously your rest period is gonna increase slightly, obviously as the ring muscle ups you know, increase, but your fatigue is gonna start setting in. That's gonna make a real difference, as we said, towards the ladder off. And again, now you've got two, three teams here really and truly hunting to take home that spot and obviously make their punch their ticket to the game. So it's gonna, you know, every event's gonna be a bun fight. Look at the last one, came down to what we, we couldn't call it at the end there. Was it a tie? It was, yep. maybe, I think there's one rep in it. You can't call it from here, let alone, you know. So it's gonna, oh man, I can't wait to watch the rest of this weekend. And uh, obviously a little bit different coming, <clears throat> coming out of that first event. Uh, we had the worm, we had the, the heavy sandbag hold. This event, a lot more on the gymnastics side. So. Um, I don't know, which uh, lane are you keeping your eyes on? Um, you know, to be honest with you, what do you got? Four, five, and six. I mean, you could basically throw a blanket over them. I know you've got some of the more gymnastic-y athletes, but <clears throat> you know, if you want to go to the games, you've got to be able to throw down with the heavy stuff. You've got to throw down with the static stuff, as we saw in the last year. And now you've got to throw down with the gymnastic-y CrossFit. Like, you know, beautiful little couplet, if you want to talk about that. You know, you've got your muscle-ups and your thrusters. So, I mean, this is what CrossFit does. They, they want to throw down something where you're stuck and you can't move or you're waiting on a, a, your team and you have to work together as a team. Now, again, synchro work at its best. How well, good see. are you, AHS Synchros, and how good is your team in general? Overall, actually. Interesting start to this one. As you can see, uh, a lot of the teams have opted to put their females on the rings for the first set of three. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the only standard over here or minimum requirement is that each athlete completes one ring muscle up. So uh, the main Africa team right over here, sending out uh, Michelle Moran first to get a full set of three ring muscle ups out the way first. And they've done the same thing with their second string athletes, uh, Alan Fowlis and Angie Conaway. Yeah, I think it's also, like I said, it's gonna come down to that strategy of how you're gonna do it, who you're gonna send out there because some athletes don't have that ring muscle up. You know, some athletes fire it like there's no tomorrow and their gymnastics is incredibly strong. So, you know, as any competition, where are your weaknesses and, uh, you know, can you stop the hemorrhaging if, it, if you are found out? Who was that? That was Tiger Valley Synergy. Uh, seemed like the, they were running back to their bar first for their second set. Obviously now as all these athletes approach the bar, we're adding reps. Now they need to complete five muscle ups, bar and ring in a synchronized fashion and 10 thrusters. I mean, other than the fact that this is going to be a very high scoring event in terms of the rep scheme that they're going to get into, are they coming out too hot? Because now you've got the three fastest teams. So it's a case of like, are you going to come out hotness or are you going to hang back just enough to give maybe the other team a false sense of hope and then just be like, just hang in the sort of the shadows and strike in the last two, three minutes or what looks like it's happening here, absolute, you know, hammer and tongue from the word go. They are, they are blistering through this. Uh, but I do think something to note is that obviously every alternating round, you're getting an equal amount of rest. So it's kind of one of those where the harder you go, you are still getting into a rest period. I think that's going to kind of allow athletes to push a little harder than what they would if this was just a 15-minute non-stop AMRAP. True. I mean, like you said, it, it's, this is the thing I've enjoyed, especially like going back to, to the last event. You know, you had athletes that are, uh, let's call them at-home specialists or inbox specialists. Now you've got face-to-face -face where suddenly everything changes. You know, your strategy when you're in your box, your teammate alone, do you go according to time when you're training this event? Or is it something like, you know what, maybe your team is just phenomenal in person and you guys suffer or struggle slightly when you've got no one else pushing you. Are you a hunter or do you like being hunted, I guess? As you can see here on your screen now, we've got uh, the Cape Crossfit Wolfpack, uh, the Unboxed Mayhem Africa, and then uh, Tiger Valley Synergy. 
just filling your screen. The top three favorites coming into this competition. And it looks like Unbox Africa is just holding the lead, but I mean, it's marginal. One thruster in it. Yeah, it's actually, it's sort of, you know, even the fact we, we know the barbells move forward, it's, it's still a bit tough to see exactly where everyone is because you leave your barbell to move back, you know, to carry on there. I've seen that it looks like the Zulu team didn't actually do a change out, just went straight on into the next set. So obviously their athletes are feeling good or there's some fatigue setting in for possibly, like you said, their second strength. This looks like another team that's uh, taking a breather. Yeah, this is a uh, lane one. CrossFit 111, relentless. Maybe just struggling to get that first ring muscle up through because, uh, as we mentioned, the minimum requirement is for each athlete to complete one ring muscle up, at least. So if you've got a, a team where one athlete cannot do a single muscle up, yeah. that is where your workout ends. Yeah, and that's, you know, and again, you're going to put massive pressure on your... Uh, your other teammates in terms of like if you do get that one and that's the bare minimum requirement radical like that's man that's i'm so pumped and i'm, I'm glad i'm like come on love come on come on get it through come on get it oh mm, that is that is hard she got through the probably the trickiest part of the muscle up looks amazing and then just struggling to get that that ring dip out at the top i think <coughs> excuse me wow i think there again just catching it really low in the rings I feel that like she probably would have done better on a bar. It was a minimum requirement, one of each, or yeah. just one muscle up, one of each? No, one ring muscle up. One ring muscle up, okay, yeah. there you go. So, so every obviously. athlete needs to complete at least one ring muscle up. Yeah. Now, again, like we said, that's the strategy. Are you going through like, obviously in your top three teams, which is here, neck and neck, I mean, you watch it, it's hard to throw a blanket across them to see who's in the lead here. Literally maybe half a rep, half a step in it, but to your lower down team, not even your lower down teams, just call them your second team, tier teams, that are there hunting. So four, five, six, and seven. You know, what are your weaknesses? Because I'm gonna tell you now, with athletes like AJ Fisser, you've got Michelle Morand, uh, you've got Emma over there, you've got Callum Diebel, you've got athletes with massive, not only just local, but international experience, who have very, very minimal holes in their game. As we can see, yeah, these teams that are, are moving across the floor, I mean, it is neck and neck between Unbox, Mayhem Africa, and the Cape Crossed Wolfpack. They are already into their set of nine muscle-ups. So they will now be doing... <laughs> maths is not my strong point. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Quick maths. I'm a little bit slow on the draw. I think it's nine ring muscle-ups and 20 um, thrusters in less than six minutes. My, my heart goes out, but you know what? Again, I'm going I'm to say, like we said earlier, like I'm not taking anyone away, anything away from any athlete, but this lady is going to give it absolutely everything she's got. She's, you know she's going to have a crack at it. She has to. And that I find is the beauty or the sportsmanship of any event, anyone. Like She's going to go out there and give it horns because I'm telling you now, today is the day she's going to get that first ring muscle up. And boy, oh boy, is she going to remember that moment forever. This is a... Uh CrossFit Juggernaut Unstoppable. Del Smith and Carly Ann Smith, that's a husband and wife there. Del Smith's been in the game for a while as well. No, there's definitely an absolute talent pool of uh, athletes out there that just have got experience, whether it be just local or international and local. But you know what? The thing is, a lot of these guys have been on the floor for a number of years in terms of these top ranked teams, and it's just good to watch. Like I said, look at that, just synchro on point. In the back of your screen there, you can see Cape Crossfit Wolfpack uh, start taking the lead here. I mean, they haven't been shy. This is two years in the making. And you can see there, Callum Mark, Deli Deeble, obviously watching one of the Finkels, making sure that their team is synchro. You're going to see like the wider grip from uh, the Finkel girls and Callum as well. I mean, they're not tall athletes, but obviously that wider grip just make it easier to go you know, from the shoulders to overhead in a far easier motion. Where if you look literally on the right hand side of your screen, uh, Natalie van Heerden, much tighter grip. Looks like she's having to push that barbell a lot higher overhead. Yeah, I suppose uh, the wider your grip in your front track, the shorter your range of motion to get the bar overhead. Oh, that was Mike Fontondo. See, Callum Diebel, Mike Fontondo actually look very similar from behind. So, <laughs> apologies, guys. I know them both well. They're absolutely rock star guys. Uh, 
both have lived in Durban. Callum Diebel actually from uh, Surf Lifesaving back in the day. And found himself obviously in CrossFit and just killing it. And uh, Mark Fontana was the uh, head coach at uh, CrossFit Zulu for a while. It seems like uh, CrossFit 10-star hybrids have actually bumped up into the lead here. Just taking it away from Cape CrossFit Wolfpack over there. Uh, staying unbroken in their big set of thrusters. Like we said, that fatigue's done to set in in some teams, but nothing here for Michelle Moran and uh, looks at AJ, AJ Fisser. But again, look in the back of the screen. You can see there other teammates bent over Keeling, just recovering as quick as they can before they know they're going to get back on the floor and give it absolute hammer and tongs. Oh, there you go. They're going to switch out and share the, the, uh, the set between the two rings and bar. I think that's uh, where it becomes really important that kind of your full team can match each other's skill set. And you see there, obviously, movement standards. Your toes are not allowed to go above the bar or the rings. And you see Michelle Moran there actually tucking her feet back to make sure that she's going to get the rep and not have to do you know, unnecessary work for no reason. This is Callum Diebel this and is Callum Brady Diebel. Finkel now. I just wish the Finkel girl sisters didn't look so similar. But again, they're family. I mean, you can't get it wrong. I just got to get better, I guess. It's not them, Stretch. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. I, just, I was just going to go with they got really, really good genetics. Like I said, looking on the clock now, coming up on 10 minutes, still five minutes in this. And now it's a case of who's got that deep-seated desire to take this win. Everyone's starting to take slightly bigger breaks now on the set of thrusters. Now, I see there, obviously, AJ Fisser wearing that Mayhem Athlete t-shirt. What are your thoughts on, would you step up if your, your affiliate made a team here? Would you do the program yourself, or are you going to rely on sort of international programming? Uh, just speaking from previous experience, my box has been on uh, Mayhem Affiliate programming for four years now. Okay. Yeah, so we took to it quite early. Um, and yeah, just from the affiliate side, the... Especially when it comes into a conversation that we've had previously with um, what your main focus and your target market is inside your box. Um, the, the Mayhem program does offer multiple stages right. of like, a competitive athlete, I which gotcha. I really like. So it gives our coaches, it gives our competitive athletes an opportunity to drop into a class and not shift off of their program necessarily. Um, Maybe just bringing down a little bit of the volume, changing okay. the stimulus from a set of dumbbell thrusters to a barbell, for instance. Uh, something that would suit your affiliate better. Um, the Mayhem programming is, from my previous experience, yeah. phenomenal. So you can't fault it. And just looking at the, the history of the CrossFit Games, how many Mayhem athletes are representing at the Noble CrossFit Games? Fair point, fair point. I mean, you can't argue that that statement in, in total. I mean, it's good to see so many now what you've got. Underdog athletics, you've got uh, mayhem athletes, you from obviously, you know, Rich Froning and family. The uh, HWPO guys. Sorry, was that? Oh, yeah, yeah HWPO now yeah, with, with Matt Fraser going on his own and obviously having his own program. Then you've got uh, Tia Claire Toomey and her husband, Shane, and there's uh, Proven. So they're, they're literally, they've proven, the, you know, that they know what it takes to get to games multiple times. So I don't see a problem in athletes doing it. It's just always nice to hear it from an affiliate owner as well. Uh, our box, personally, uh, coaching CrossFit down in Durban, we do our own programming. Um, and again, everyone has their own feel. Like you said, what, what suits your affiliate best and, and what you're looking for an outcome as an affiliate? There you go, Janine Perinal looking good there. Could not believe I forgot her name earlier. She actually found me. I was like, Stretch, come on, you're better than that. So apologies, Janine. Justin Swart making those ring muscle ups look nice and easy. Shows why he's a member of the CrossFit uh, gymnastics core seminar staff. Yeah. <clears throat> and an absolute beast. I mean, look at him. He's got abs for absolute days. Like, just... In terms of, I mean, even his gymnastics, his, his handstands, his, his floor work is just, he's, <laughs> to be honest with you, he's an absolute juggernaut, and that's literally his nickname, so I understand it fully. And uh, partnering up there with Vicky Polidoru, also one of the big names in the scene. Mm. From a couple of years back, 
I think she's taken about two years out of competing. Um, she was on the Cape CrossFit Games team in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you just see it now. Teams are having to communicate so much more and pick when their rest periods are. But again, they've only got, what's that, just coming up on 90 seconds remaining in this workout. So still everything to play for. I mean, all the barbells look pretty much identical. Uh, you look around the screen, you've got some athletes, you know, taking slightly longer rests, needing to breathe. It's down to that fact of, like, for the girls, if they've managed to get through that one ring muscle up, epic. Even the guys, let's, I'm not going to lie. Like, there are days I've only got one ring muscle up in me. So you know what? It is what it is. But it's still here, the fact that your teammates can help you out. But I do like the fact that they threw in that minimum requirement of one ring muscle up. The Cape CrossFit team is falling behind a little bit now, as you can see, just dropping out of that top three. Well, staying in the top three, but um, losing the top two. Ten Star uh, Hybrids and the Unboxed Mayhem Africa are now leading the pack. The Mayhem Africa team will be very happy with the back-to-back -back, uh, heat win. Well, there we go. I think that looks like a Tiger Valley, dare I say, or a, a, not They're hunting, actually. Jeanine Perrinel, their barbell's behind. I actually think uh, Cape Crossford are in second. Could be third, unless I'm looking at the wrong person. No, because that's Jeanine so. Perrinel there. There. Uh, there you go, like I said, the gymnastics. I mean, 15 minutes, we've got 15 seconds remaining in this workout. They are giving it horns. That's uh, across the Tiger Valley Synergy that just Five needs seconds, to move their four, bars. Three, two, time. And it seems as though the unboxed Mayhem Africa team has taken a second back-to-back -back event win. I mean, that looked incredibly close. I can't actually... Yeah, I they feel are. like we missed something, but they, that Janine Perrinal and team there from Tiger Bay almost looked like they were a little bit behind there, like fourth or fifth. Yeah, I think uh, that race turned into a little race between uh, the Unboxed Mem Africa team and the 10 Star Hybrids. They came back. Just shows you, hey, you're, you're the favorite as long as you're winning. It's, I mean, but anything can happen in the sport of CrossFit. And that's what, that's the beauty of it. You know, you arrive at a competition, but uh, are you here on your best day? And can you put your best day together? But you know what? There's still two full days of competition for these athletes. We've only had two events. It's still anybody's game. But it's down to who's going to snag those, uh, those points a little bit faster than anybody else and really start uh, making some headway into this competition. Yeah, and that's 100% it. As you could see, at one point, the Cape Crossroad Wolfpack kind of took over the lead, uh, and they were looking very strong. And then suddenly in the next round, uh, it just came back down to the Crossroad Unboxed, uh, Mayhem Africa, and the 10 Star Hybrids. They just started going rep for rep. And then it seems from what we can see up here, that Unboxed, Mayhem Africa, just took the lead. I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, the actual final results there because that's going to be a good one to see. And also for the teams, I mean, so today there's been no big adjustments in terms of lanes and positions, no matter where you are. So it's going to stay the same. And then they'll reshuffle at the end of tonight. So tomorrow morning is where the big gap is, when we're going to know, like, especially in the individuals, who's bumped around, who's chopped and changed. And the individuals, you've got a man like Estien Ferreira, absolutely came out of it, heat one, and gave it horns. I'm pretty sure he beat whole of heat two. And kind of, I'm going to be so bold and so brave right now to say, like, I think he's sitting in about fifth position um, in terms of overall. And there he was out on his own in heat number one. So in the individuals, which is obviously coming up next, is still everything to play for. So it really is going to be interesting to see in the individuals between the three different heats. All right. We're just going to take a quick break, go down to the floor for an interview with the winners of heat number two. Hard as it was going to be, and as it was, uh, booked it at the end. We thought it was going to come down to the last two minutes, and it did. Incredible pacing, incredible strategy. You held on and really sailed the deal. What was the strategy going into this? Uh, talk to each other. Just With no oxygen in your lungs, you kept the communication going. And it's incredible to see. I know you can't see this live on TV, but there's a whole strategy mapped out right there. That's how you do it at the elite level. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for CrossFit Mayhem Africa. Yeah.